Do you still think that the Earth is flat? Images taken from different points of view from space are among the evidence that shows that it's sphere-shaped. The Earth is spherical in shape, but it's not a perfect sphere. It has a rough surface due to the relief of the mountains and seabeds. In addition, it spins on itself, and the centrifugal force that arises from this spin causes a bulge at the equator. All these irregularities are very small compared to the size of the Earth. The planet's surface is so complex that we cannot use it directly to make maps. So what could we use? Scientists have come up with different models of the Earth's surface for various purposes. One of them is the geoid, a fictitious surface that represents the force of gravity. It is easier to view it through a cross-section. But gravity is not the same everywhere, because the materials found within the Earth are not homogeneous. In conclusion, the geoid is very complicated and not suitable for making maps. In practice, an ellipsoid is often used as the fictitious surface. This shape is the result of the rotation of an ellipse around one of the axes passing through its center. In some cases, a sphere is also used, although it does not fit the Earth's shape as well as an ellipsoid does. OK, so how do we make maps from the ellipsoid or the sphere? Imagine that we want to draw the outline of the continents. Today, we can measure the points of that line on the ellipsoid directly with GPS. The position of each point is given with two numbers, longitude and latitude. Longitude is an angle measured from the equator from the prime meridian to the meridian that passes over the point. Latitude is another angle. In this case, it is measured on any meridian from the equator to the point required. Once the position of the points on the sphere or ellipsoid is known, we draw them on a screen or paper using mathematical calculations called map projections. Here's one way to build a projection. Imagine a light bulb near the Earth or an ellipsoid. Imagine a plane tangent to the ellipsoid. The light passes through the points of the outline and is projected onto the paper, meaning the shadow produces the map, which will be different if we change the position of the bulb. However, it seems that the shadow is deformed, and it's not that the map lies or is incorrect, but depending on the position of the bulb with respect to the ellipsoid, i.e. depending on the map projection we use, we'll obtain a map that preserves some dimensions or other. Look, on this map, the line connecting Mexico City with Lisbon seems different than on this other, but it is actually the same path. Maps also change the size and shape of areas. Although we are used to seeing it, this is the true size of Greenland with respect to Africa. That is because we are drawing the world on a flat surface. However, on the map we can measure surfaces, angles or distances. But not all maps are useful to measure these dimensions. To measure surfaces, we have to use a map that contains an equivalent projection. A map in equivalent projection can change the shapes, but the value of the areas, with respect to reality, is maintained. To measure angles, we have to use a map in a conformal projection. On these maps, we can measure the angle between any pair of directions. And to measure distances, we have to use a map containing an equidistant projection. Take care with distances, as they can't be measured in all directions. In addition, the directions in which they can be measured depend on the type of equidistant projection. So does this mean we can't measure all distances on a map? Don't worry. If you use a map that has a large scale, such as topographic maps that represent a small portion of territory, you can measure any distance, because they are designed for that purpose. The errors are not appreciable. In short, the perfect map does not exist. Maps representing the whole Earth produce more deformations, although some cartographic projections 
deform reality as a whole as little as possible. This happens, for example, in the Winkle triple projection. In maps depicting a small portion of territory, instead of the whole world, the tangent paper is closer to the ellipsoid, so the deformation of the map is smaller. This occurs, for example, in the Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM, projection. In the official cartography of the National Geographic Institute, various cartographic projections are used, though mainly UTM and Lambert projections. I'm sure that now you have a better understanding of the shape of the Earth and how it's represented on maps.